Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium, everybody. Today, I want to talk about reading PAR measurements in the 1600 gallon system. Now, I unboxed a PAR meter last week, and I wanted to take some time and do some preliminary measurements of PAR in the tank. I'm going to be doing some very thorough data collection of PAR readings in all the tanks of the 1600 gallon system, meaning both displays and the 150 gallon refuge tank. So I really want to understand what kind of light output I'm getting with the existing lights that I have. This PAR meter, I've only tested it out a few times, but I wanted to share with everybody some of the preliminary data measurements and how I'm collecting it. Now to hook up the SQ520 to make it work is pretty simple. You need a Windows PC and it has a USB cord on it. You simply plug it into the USB, open up the Apogee software. Once the sensor has been connected to the computer, the software will say that it has a device connected. Let me show everybody what the computer screen looks like for the Apogee software. The software, as I said, is pretty simple. You can see that there's a device connected here and what device it is, an SQ520. It also tells you what the sensor is reading at this time, which I have the sensor kind of turned away. I'll turn it towards some lights here and we'll see if we get a PAR reading. And just the little light that I'm using here, putting the PAR sensor literally right in front of it will give me a little bit of PAR. And this is like right on top of the bulb or what I'm doing here. So it does show you what the PAR readings are pretty quickly. It's a one second response time. The one thing I like with this software is that it allows you to do logging. Simply just go to setup, give it a file location, Tell it how often you want to do a sample and how often you want it to do a log. Hit start. You can see it's now making a log, but it will start to graph this as well in the software. And as I go in and put the sensor here right up next to a light source, you can see that the light has dramatically increased in its PAR level. As I move it away, we'll start to see a dip. The nice thing is though, that all this data is being collected and put into a computer file so I could work with it later on. That's how the software more or less works for this. It's very simple to use, it's easy to use. There's only a handful of settings here. So the one that I have looked at is make sure you use immersion settings for when you're going to be in water. There's also some different field logging options I haven't looked at yet. Very simple software to use though. The software should work out great for me. I want to be able to log all this data into the computer so that I can utilize it and graph it out potentially and maybe even make some 3D models of what the PAR readings look like in the display tanks. Let's take some actual PAR readings now out of the displays. I really want to start with a 720 gallon display. Let's see what kind of PAR values we're getting there. I started a new file so I can start to log the data off of this. Simply just take the wand here, make sure you have a nice loop on your USB cord if you're using this model, that way you don't get any water running back down into the USB port. And then it'll be pretty simple. Just gonna take the PAR meter and put it in. I'm gonna start up at the top here and see exactly what kind of readings I'm getting here. And I'm hoping my puffer doesn't try to take a chunk out of it. So right now, at this point in the tank, I'm getting a total of 24 par, almost 25 par. The base of the coral, I'm actually getting 30 par. And on the bottom, I'm getting a total of 18 par. Now that's right above a light. Let's try going in the middle here where we'll see what we're at on top of the shelf. 34 par right now. 35 par is all we're getting here. Still too interested in it. 35 par. 20 par down here. By this other Colt Coral, getting a total of 26 par. So not really a whole lot in the way of high par readings in this tank. 
I didn't expect there to be. These lights aren't even turned up all the way. But right at the surface, I'm only getting 60, 60 par, 70 par. That's what we're spiking at right now. So there's not a lot of light coming out of these at the moment. But while the PAR readings are not that high in the 720 gallon tank, the primary focus of this tank is to keep fish. But I gotta say, even though these couple of corals are in pretty low light levels, they're still thriving pretty good. I have noticed growth in the cold coral. I think it's time we take our quantum sensor here and take some PAR measurement readings in the 150 gallon refuge tank and let's see what the PAR looks like there. The PAR readings in the 150 gallon refuge tank really from where the algae grows measured from about 50 all the way down to about 20. And with those lower PAR readings, it's a little surprising, but it has so much algae growth coming out of there. And when I did an individual light test of PAR from the floodlights to the AI soul, to the floodlight that's about half burned out. Directly underneath the floodlight, I was getting from about 50 to 70 par out of the floodlight. When I went under the AI sole, it jumped up to about 150 par at the surface of the water. And again, when I went to the other half burned out floodlight, it was in the 50 to 70 par range. With par being only about 20 to 50 at the bottom of a 150 gallon refuge tank, and say that even with that amount of light, the algae is still growing. I do think though, that there might be some room to add some more high intensity lighting into that refuge, which might speed up algae growth in the refuge tank as opposed to the display tanks. The 480 gallon tank, the algae has been going away because I've been adding a lot of cleanup crew and it's slowly going away. You can see a lot of the branches here now are free of algae and every week it's less and less. The 720 gallon tank has gotten a little bit more algae. Big question still remains though, what are the par values in the 480 gallon tank with the 8T5 bulbs and the four Radeon G4 probes? Let's take the canopy covers off and see what kind of par measurements we can get in this tank. Got the par meter ready to go. Even out here, in the light, I'm still getting about 10 par with being this far off to the side of the light. Let's start off by looking at the LPS side of the tank and let's see where our intensities are at as far as the light. I'm going to start right by the bubble coral. I'm getting about 90 par next to the bubble coral. Other green bubble here, we're about 60 par all the way into the corner, 34 par. Now, as I kind of go along this area here with all the frog spawns, we're in this 80 to 90 range in par. Around 92. The hammer back here, 85. The sea anemone. It's getting about 115 par right here. I'm moving into the center more, we got a little bit more in the way of light. 150 par here by my Duncan. We're at 175. Now for the acros. Now this one's kind of under a piece of glass here. 133 par, 150 par, 150, about 140 on the sand bed here. We're getting about 100 par on the sand bed. At the surface of the water right now, I am getting 230 par, 250 par, and around 200 par. Now if I take my sensor and just simply put it up close, I'm now at 1500 par that close to the light. Let's put the canopies back on here and discuss what these PAR readings mean. I'm sure the big question everybody has is, what does all this mean with the PAR? Well, right now the Radeon G4 Pros are only turned up to about 60% intensity on an AB plus schedule. I will be ramping these lights up to a higher percentage as I'm getting a pretty decent amount of PAR for all my LPS being in that 100 range. 
I think they're all doing really good. And this again goes to watching your corals and observing how they are reacting. The corals in here are all growing and doing really well. I don't have a reason to think that they're not getting enough light. Even in the 720 gallon tank with those very low par values, the cold corals and the blue ridge in there are both still looking really good despite being surrounded by algae. The SPS on the other hand, now they are still getting a pretty low level of par compared to how some people run their tanks. I'm going to continue to start raising the intensity of the radions that are over this part of the tank. Now one thing I will say is I'm not sure if I'm going to continue to do that over the LPS section. The nice thing about having these lights set up the way that I have them is I can control the intensities independently. And since I want to have a LPS garden on this side, I want to make sure that I don't hit these corals with too much light. The SPS are showing signs of growth already, despite all the algae that's been in the tank and even lower lighting levels that were set up on these lights earlier. The corals are showing signs of growth. One of the acros has actually come off of the piece of rock that it's on and started to get onto the main branching rock in the rock structure here. Overall, I think this PAR meter is going to be a great tool. I'm going to continue checking the PAR values as I ramp the intensity of these lights up, while at the same time also monitoring the corals to see how they react. I'd also like to say thank you to Anthony McKay. On my last video, he posted down in the comments a magnet presentation that I should check out from Dana Riddle. Now, I didn't find a 2017 magnet presentation from Dana Riddle, but I found a 2016 magnet presentation. And the presentation by Dana Riddle at 2016 Magna had to do with the photosynthesis rates of corals based on the PAR, flow, and alkalinity that they were receiving. It was a very interesting presentation. You know, a lot of good scientific data that he did over a good period of time to show that he has results. One of the things he pointed out was that as your PAR gets too high, corals will stop photosynthesizing and actually kind of shut down. But if you have the right levels of lighting, flow, and alkalinity, it could really supercharge photosynthesis in the corals. I highly suggest you go check out that presentation if you haven't seen it. Of course, like anything else, if anyone ever sees any kind of useful information or presentations that are out there, please feel free to share them in the comments below. Thanks again, Anthony McKay, for sharing that. It really did help me out. Now, if anybody has any comments or questions on today's video about PAR, please go ahead and leave them down below. If you'd like to see me do something very specific with the PAR meter, or you'd like to see PAR measurements on very specific corals or parts of my tank, please let me know down in the comments below, and I'll get the PAR meter fired up, and we'll take some measurements for you. As always, if you'd like to see more on the 1600 gallon system, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button I'm putting out one to two videos a week right now. Thanks again for watching everybody and I will see you on the next video.